All right, let me set the record straight quickly on some issues I see circulating in the YTBC. Let me straighten that out immediately. Nip it in the bud. First one, Guillermo Rigandau, it is said by some sources, it's his fault that he's in the position he's in today. First of all, that is fallacious. That is very false in the sense that you don't put a man, you don't narrow a man's options, and then afterwards you blame the man for making the decisions he's making. Guillermo Rigandau has been blacklisted, and it first started with Bob Aaron of top rank when he, as his promoter, said that Guillermo Rigandau is not fight friendly. His style is not fight friendly. This is after he defeated Nonito Donier. So this is his promoter doing this to him. Top rank further went on to blacklist Guillermo Rigandau and eventually Guillermo Rigandau did not renew his contract with top rank because they were simply bad mouthing him. And then HBO with Larry Merchants and Jim Lampley did nothing to help the situation with his fight with Abeko. They literally uh, bad mounted Guillermo Rigandau. His promoter was bad mounting him, mounting up to this fight. People started walking out on the fight uh, because of all the negative press that Guillermo Rigandau got. He was an exciting fighter, etc., etc., etc. And this wasn't said of Guillermo Rigandau uh, on HBO as well as on Showtime when he, you know, really took the test. Tion Kennedy and he was knocking down guys like this guy right here. Nobody was saying that of Guillermo Rigandau, okay? So it is what it is. Then on top of that, this guy gets blacklisted, so he goes to Japan, he starts fighting with the Japanese organizations out there, non-top rank fighters, okay? He fought a Taiwanese guy, and then he fought a Japanese guy, Amagasa, and that was last year. And this year, he was trying to get better management, so he parted ways with Gary Hyde. He said he wasn't going to be fighting for a while to try and get those big fights. With Vasily Lomachenko, it fell through because the terms were not favorable to both parties of the agreement. So, but he's going to be fighting November. So you can't be looking at this guy and saying, one, he hasn't been fighting top tier competition, so he needs to just fight more often. You guys know, Guillermo Rigano said he had the dealings with his manager. He was going to sit out the time because you can't be fighting scrubs all the time as a world champion, as a unified world champion. They say it's Guillermo Rigano's fault. He was stripped. They communicated their conditions. They communicated their situation to the WBO. But the WBO has been stripping dudes, okay? They've been stripping Demetrius Andre. They, and they knew Demetrius Andre's problems, you know, they stripped uh, Guillermo Rigandau, they stripped uh, Andre Ward. This is not new, okay? So to say it's solely his fault is to be extremely unfair to Guillermo Rigandau. In fact, you guys want to talk about Gennady Golovkin is the most avoided f fighter out there. You want to talk about that. That's not true. Guillermo Rigandau is the most avoided fighter out there. This guy, his mandatory, Chris Avalos, avoided him, okay? The top tier competition, the top 15 in the WBO, want nothing to do with Guillermo Rigondeau. Nothing. That's why Juarez is right now facing Donaire. Donaire doesn't want anything to do with Rigondeau. Otherwise, he would have jumped at the opportunity to fight Rigo. He's not calling out Rigo. Okay? Nobody's calling out Rigo. No one. Okay? We can't say that for GDG. People have called out GDG. Right? People have answered the call of GDG. All right? Now, Guillermo Rigandau is avoided by Carl Frampton, Scott Quigg. He's been avoided by Leo Santa Cruz. And these are all world champions. They don't want nothing to do with Rigandau. Leo Santa Cruz went up a division. Carl Frampton is now going to be fighting Scott Quigg, and we hear the winner will face Guillermo Rigandau. That's great to hear. Okay, Right now, the WBA has him as a champion in recess, but if he fights, and I hope he fights in November, uh, that will set up possibly a fight between the winner of Frampton and Quigg and himself, and maybe Carl Frampton, because I think Carl Frampton beats Scott Quick. So if Frampton faces Guillermo Rigan, that'd be a good fight. I would love to see that. I think Rigo beats him. Um, I don't know if he stops him, but I know he beats him. And so I would love to see that fight. Of course, that's if Carl Frampton can get that negotiations through to fight him. Okay. And with Al Heyman there, I don't see why it won't happen. So Guillermo Rigan does for the best that he could possibly afford. He not only fought Nolito Donaire, he fought Joseph Abeco. And they outclassed both guys. Okay, not only did they outclass him, the guys were gun shy to fight him. All right, and the reason Guillermo Rigandau is so avoidant, he's so dangerous, is because this guy is not just a counter puncher. He's not just a guy with a punch, but he has severe accuracy and great defense. Not only can you not hit this dude, but he hits you, and when he hits you, he can drop you with one punch. All right, makes him extremely dangerous for any opponent in his division. And the thing about Guillermo Rigandau, he has slowed down some, but because of his skill set, he doesn't have to worry about slowing down or being less athletic. He could fight until he's 45, so he ain't going nowhere, which is what makes him deadly, deadly, deadly.
Okay, he's just deadly. He's a style that's very hard to beat. And on top of that, he's a style that has longevity. This dude is the most avoided fighter in boxing today. There's nobody else like him. You know, Aaron Pryor, at least he got, you know, one big fight and he was avoided, like the plague. So it was Marvin Hagler, okay? And so on. But nobody quite like Guillermo Rigondeaux. I mean, no one. I mean, no one. I mean, they talked about Charlie Burley. Charlie Burley never got even a championship match. Guillermo, at least he got two. Nobody's been avoided like this dude. You guys have a great one.